Yeah, I mean, I played as a kid. Um, you know, as the game launched, I was the perfect age for it. And, uh, you know, I played a lot until I got to high school and puberty sort of took over. And then you realize that there were only young gentlemen around the table and no girls. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as a survival mechanism, I, I stopped playing sort of when it got uncool. Uh, so far. It, yeah, yeah. And then picked it back up uh, in acting school with four or uh, three of the four members of Beetle and Grimm's or four of the five members of Beetle and Grimm's all went to acting school together. And we started oh. playing again at 21. Uh, and now, you know, we're all over 50 and um, have been playing. In fact, I'm going to play tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, I played a character for seven years named Beetle, which is obviously uh -huh. one of the namesakes for Beetle and Grimm's. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, you know, that campaign was such a big part of our lives. I mean, we played for so long and we were all getting married at the time. We all started having oh. kids at that time because it's such a long expanse of time, seven years. Yeah. So, you know, but if I, if I'm really being honest, I mean, right now that, you know, the moment that sort of sits mostly in my mind is that we had an episode during fast perform kill kill that I got very, very emotional. I mean, I don't want to give it away, but basically long story mm -hmm. short, you know, my dad's really sick and the characters in this adventure were looking to resurrect their father so that they could, you know, so they'd have him sign the will. But my character decided that he wanted us hug his dad one more time. Yeah. And as the game progressed, progressed, um, I just got closer and closer to like cracking. And at the end of the show, you know, the, the, the conceit of the show is like you know, four first level characters go out into the world to become heroes and get obliterated. Um, every show ends with this thing that we call the epitaph and so when it came time to do the epitaph i you know i couldn't contain myself and basically ended up crying hysterically for like 10 minutes so uh -oh. if i had you know right this second if you said to me hey what's the moment stands out you know that that episode was super emotional very cathartic and ends up being a beautiful moment shared around that table You know, we have this episode where I'm I play and where the solar, this angel, this righteous angel comes down and sort of um vanquishes these evil characters. Um nice. and that to me is really funny because it, that's the one show where we pushed the boundary so far we actually went back and reshot a piece of it. Uh, um oh. because we were worried we had gone to too far <laughs> I, I won't tell you what it is we ended up mm -hmm. it wasn't too far we ended up keeping it uh it ended up being hilarious but that's definitely one of those episodes that um you know it's skeets mm -hmm. playing in that episode jared um is the dm and he's incredible and it's just a really good good episode so that's that's my favorite right now yeah i love the druid I'm not gonna lie. I love it. Yeah. I, I'm not a big damage guy. I like in our game, the game we've played with in, since we were 21, um, which is the Beetle and Grimm's game. You know, there's a lot of emphasis put on cool moves and mm -hmm. like smart moves. Like those moves are really rewarded, and all the guys at the table are very like, oh. So for me, a druid allows for damage if need be but also does things like turns into a mouse and goes forward or, you know, or, or it becomes a, you know, a dire wolf or whatever to aid in combat. So I, I like the, I love, I like the variety of druids. And I also like the fact that druids are really connected to, um, you know, something emotional. Like I, I always mm -hmm. like characters that have, have high emotional state. Um, yeah. It's super fun. And you, you're not doing a lot of damage, but you're doing cool stuff. It is my favorite spell. I mean, you know, it's so funny. I am always the dude who loves a grease spell. Oh, so I yeah. will throw a grease spell <laughs> at the most inappropriate time. I'll just grease, like, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll grease mm -hmm. walking down a procession. I'll grease stairs. I'll grease almost anything. 
So that's uh, like one of those things you're like, it's a cool move that people are like, oh, that was good. Because it's really hard to get up grease steps. And it's like, it easily changes your escape, you know? I also like a message spell. I like sending little messages across rooms. I like that. I mean, we right now are in the middle of an Eberron game. Um, oh, so nice. Two things. I'm playing an Eberron game with the Beetle and Grimm's guys. We, uh, mm -hmm. We're playing tonight, which is what we talked about earlier, which is great. Uh, and then I'm DMing Strahd for a bunch of Hollywood uh, television showrunners, which is oh, a really so fun game because they're they're great players, super creative. They're smart. Uh, they like to role play a lot. So that game to me is is exciting as well. So those are my two games right the second. And then, you know, we've been play testing. We have a, um, right now with Beano Grimms, we have a Kickstarter going called, for a game called Ring of Chaos. Mm -hmm. So the development process of that game has been super fun because we've been running it through the ringer, trying to break it, playing it multiple times, you know. Um, and so that to me has been a really exciting process because we've never done anything like that before. And, and sort of breaking into new territory is exciting. We're also playing over Thanksgiving, which is coming up for us here in America, um, where I'm playing, and this is a scoop, nobody knows this, we're doing uh, an escape room. Ooh. Uh, escape room. We're doing like a mystery box, uh, escape room, uh, murder mystery box. It's a murder mystery box. Fun. And I get to play test it with my family over the holidays with oh, like so all fun. like all the, 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 um, all the documents and all our artifacts. So I get to do like the final play test of that, which has been great. The fun thing is it's IP. So it's not original Ooh. to Grimm because we've gone out and partnered with someone and we're building we're building a couple of them actually. So that's a, a new avenue that Beetle and Grimm's is exploring that we're really excited about. Yeah, you know what's funny is that I was just doing an interview, writing my questions, answers out. Um, yeah, you know what's funny is that I, I think that with, especially with Fast Perform Kill Kill, I think I had like 10 characters or something. Um, uh -huh. And out of 20 shows, that's a lot. And you're doing three a day and sort of like you're, you're like, you're going quickly through it. And the thing I discovered is that big, strong, bold choices really serve a game in a great way. Right. It allows everyone at the table to know who you are. Um, it, it allows you to have a point of view on almost everything that happens. And it's also fun to play. I mean, we spend so much of our lives being afraid of making mistakes, um, especially young people. I mean, I just see it riddling my kids and I see it riddling, you know, young adults. This idea of like, I have to be perfect. I think that's growing up with the specter of you know of, of social media and seeing everyone else in life doing so well and sort of you know being scared to make a mistake and and my whole thing is like the the, the joy of gaming is the energy you put in that table so my whole thing is make big fucking bold choices and lean in and go for it because everything else in life is so measured you know so yeah yeah that's my, that's that. my, not only my life advice, but my character <laughs> advice. You know, I just started to put it out, out, put it out into the universe. I mean, I would love to play with Stephen Colbert. You know, um, he likes D and D, uh, and I think the idea of like getting to play with him would be awesome. And I know, you know, there's a world in which that possibly could happen. I know Matt Mercer played with him and. So certainly Stephen Colbert, um, or like, I mean, obviously, you know, Barack Obama is a hero. So getting somebody so measured, right, or to to play a game like that would be super fun. So one of those two guys would be awesome, especially a game like Fast Perform. You know, it's only forty eight minutes. You're there for an hour. Uh -huh. um, you know that you're not going to have to continue with the character past like that hour and. So there's something really liberating about playing in the game like that. Yeah, but the thing is that I think one of the great things about the game, about Fast Perform, is that we don't look for silly. We find yeah. silly, silly happens. But 
we really try to not make it anachronistic. You know, we try not to do those little silly jokes on the side about like the internet or or mm -hmm. whatever that is that sort of breaks the the world of the game. Keep that cherished. Like, you know, play the stakes, play the moments, and let the comedy be born out of out of the moment of the game but honor the game. Um, and that's one of the things we really try to drive home with, with Fast Perform is like, just play the game. We'll, comedy will come. And, you know, and especially faced with like, you know, facing down Tiamat. Like the, the great, one of the great things about the show is that you get these brilliant moments of comedy that are hilarious and you'll end up laughing your ass off. But then at the end, there is this sort of beautiful, There's a beautiful sort of element of, of, of the storytelling that is what do people do when facing their ultimate demise, right? And that's the thing I don't, we, none of us expected. We were building the game, you know, and building the TV show. Like we were sort of like, okay, this is how, this is how the, you know, the metrics work. This is how you move through. Here's how like the set pieces work. You know, here's how, what the, at what time you have to be where. Um, and, but the thing that we didn't expect and we, we sort of, leaned into once we found it is that each show all four characters are obliterated but what they do in their last moments or what they do to satisfy their their quest um can be epically heroic and so you know that that's been the real gift of the show to be honest is that these these moments of epitaph we talked about earlier in that show I did, or these moments of heroism born out of these silly stakes gives the game a sense of weight that is something that we are, that we adore now, but didn't expect at the beginning. Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill is a comedy live play about first level characters facing certain death against big scary monsters. It's out right now and you can find more info plus a link to watch it in the description.